welcome to another video. Uh, this is another review video. I'm sorry for putting two reviews so close together. I recently did the one on the Ohuhu watercolor pens, but I really liked this footage, so I wanted to do it. I was at Barnes & Noble's, which, if you don't know, is a bookstore in the USA, and I came across this set of, is it five? I think it's five. Um, wait, no, it's of six. Six alcohol-based markers, a skin tone set, and I really wanted to play around with them. Uh, so here they are. The colors are powder, skin white, mocha, apricot, cocoa, and ebony. They're all really pretty colors, and what immediately stuck out to me is that these don't have the typical chisel tip and bullet nib, which are common for cheaper markers. These have a brush tip and a bullet tip, which I did miss having the chisel tip, but like having a brush tip and cheaper markers is pretty uncommon, and just like right off the bat, these seemed a lot nicer compared to other like really cheap markers I've tried out. This set was $13, which is kind of pricey considering like how cheap you can get alcohol-based markers, but it's like incredibly cheap for brush tips. Uh, so the first drawing in this video is this little witch girl. Uh, I just drew her super quickly on the page where I swatched these colors. And another thing that really stuck out to me is that the lighter colors were actually like light. <laughs> One thing you'll notice with cheaper markers is they have issues making lighter colors. And that's one of the reasons people really like Copics because they can make super light colors. But the lighter colors in this set felt like genuine light colors and you could get a pretty good range, which was really nice. So with the lightest color, uh, Skin White, it's this really pretty pink. I'm just adding a bit of a glow to all the stars on this little witch drawing. Uh, I really love how the shading on her hat turned out. These markers were really nice. They blended super well. The brush tip probably had a contributing factor to that, but like they blended super well. They had a pretty nice color range for only six colors. And what really shocked me is that uh, they didn't do that really nasty, um, like when you would try to blend two colors, it didn't like pick up the color like from the previous marker, or at least it, like it didn't do it like a lot, like it was very subtle, which for cheaper markers, I've noticed that happening and it drives me insane. So I really, really, really like that. Overall, I think that this drawing turned out super cute and I really like it. It's just a little witch drawing. It's, I actually go back and I color her eyes in later. I color them brown. Uh, right now they're just pure white. I'm not sure if I preferred them pure white or when they're colored, but here is the finished illustration. As you can see, it's super cute. I really love it. I felt like that little practically doodle would kind of be copying out of a video. So I whipped up another drawing in the morning of this little fox girl wearing a kimono. So now I will be coloring her in. I would have liked to include one other um, illustration for this video, but I didn't. So sadly, it's just these two drawings. So here we're doing a bit of a lighter skin character. I didn't color her skin in completely. I just used the powder color to do the shadows and then I used the skin white color to add some blush. And here I'm coloring in her ears with, I think it was apricot and mocha, I think it was. Uh, yeah, my biggest complaint with this set is that it has a pretty like good like transition from the colors. Like you've got skin white, then powder, then apricot, then mocha. But then um, from mocha to like the next like lightest color, I'm putting air quotes around that, the next lightest color is cocoa. And cocoa is like significantly darker. I feel like there should have been a bit more of a transition, so you can't really blend them to each other, which kind of sucked. Um, but it, I, I could work around it. Uh, here with the hair, I basically included every single color. I started by doing the highlighted regions in um, uh, powder, and then I went in with apricot, and then for the lighter, lightest shadows, uh, and the subtlest shadows, I went in with mocha, and then went from mocha to, um, what, what do you call it, um, uh, cocoa, which, you know, got pretty dark, as you can see right now, um, mocha, uh, I mean, cocoa is significantly darker than, uh, 
mocha, but I actually think that the hair turned out super cool with this drawing. I'm really proud of it, especially since it's short hair and I don't draw short hair very often. But I think the coloring is also super nice. As for the cons of these markers, the brush tips wear down and fray so quickly. Oh my god. I, like, just in, when I completed, by the time I completed this drawing and the other drawing, like, just between swatching and these two drawings, the tips were already starting to fray. And as of the moment, like, this footage is probably, like, two weeks old or so. Um, I used these markers a lot, and their tips have gotten pretty frayed. Like, the skin white tip has gotten so frayed. That is mainly because I did do like one particular drawing where I was putting a lot of pressure on the tip. But still, the brush tips are definitely not the most durable. But I don't think that this set is particularly bad. I think that it's super nice just to expand color range or uh, like say you have a collection of Copic markers and you want to do some background coloring or you want to do some practice or some doodling and you don't want to waste the ink out of your Copic markers, I think it would be nice to just pick up some of these because uh, they only are like about $13 and I do really love them. They do blend really nicely and something about using like cheaper art supplies, for some reason it just feels like less pressure. Like, these felt a lot more relaxed and fun than like, mind you, using my Copic markers are super fun, but this felt just like really chill and relaxed, so I really enjoyed that. Um, I guess another con, which it's, it kind of depends on your preference, is that these have a bullet tip and a uh, brush tip, while I really enjoy having chisel tips. So I did, a couple in a couple instances, I really missed having a chisel tip, but also, I did find that the bullet, having the bullet tip and brush tip combination also really helped. So it's, it's a pro and a con, depends on your preferences, depends on what you're trying to do. Here I'm going in with a white Posca pen and adding highlights. And this is where the difference between like the two colors, how it isn't really a smooth transition, really sticks out. I colored this circle with every single color except for uh, powder and skin white because those are like pinks and they would look kind of out of place. But I did a transition with all the colors and it took me such a long time to work the blend between uh, mocha and cocoa to even make it look half decent. Um, it It's a pretty choppy blend, I'll admit it, but I think I managed to work with it pretty well considering it wasn't a good transition at all. It would have been a lot easier if I let myself use another transition color, but I very specifically limited myself to just these six pens. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is that while the brush tips fray pretty quickly, the chisel tips, uh, not the chisel tips, the bullet tips are very durable. So that's awesome. I haven't had any fray. So here's the finished illustration of this little fox girl. I think it's super cute and I'm really proud of it. And yeah, that's about it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!